So yesterday, uh, at last, uh, I heard the truth about the UK immigration, uh, the balance um, of the what the media tell us, because they don't give us really a balanced view of um, what the issues are. Because yesterday I heard, um, which is was the 8th of uh, September 2017, that 80% uh, of the 3.6 million EU citizens that we have in the UK now are non-skilled workers. 80%. That means 20% are professionals, professionals or similar, which are obviously people who are working and educated, have some trade or profession. This means nurses, doctors, um, surveyors, you, you know, anything like this, scientists. Um, so 20% of 3.6 million is 640,000 professionals and 80% of 3.6 million uh, EU citizens we have here is about 2.8 million people we have here who are non-skilled workers doing work we could do ourselves. Non-skilled means, well, non-skilled, it could be anybody, somebody who's making coffee, somebody who's a labourer in the factories. Um, I'm non-skilled, well, no, I've, I used to be a nurse, so I have a skill, I have a profession. But, um, you know, as I say, it's people that um, haven't got a skill and we can do this work. This is why uh, we are having people coming in, taking the jobs at a very low rate because there's so many applying for jobs, um, the, the wages go down. And we don't need them. All we're doing is importing a population to, uh, that we have to support. Now, um, of these 640,000 professionals, the 20%, um, 55,000 from the EU are in the NHS and um, so that's not so many really uh, and because we have about 1.2 million in total in the NHS so it's about a third so uh, but you should also be aware I've been in hospital recently and um, it's a case that yes there are a lot of um, uh, EU and other workers in the staff most of them in fact in this particular hospital I went into uh, and when I've been to other hospitals because I've been in hospital quite a lot this last three or four years um, most of the um, there's you very seldom come across uh, in London anyway a British nurse um, so uh, but also you know when you look at the patients most of them are also not British they're of ethnic groups or Muslims or, or um, other other nationalities. So all we seem to be doing is importing um, a uh, population that we have to support and care for and service. And we have to remember that 3.6 million people means 3.6 million jobs that are going somewhere. Not literally those because obviously some are children and similar but you get my meaning and it's 3.6 million homes we have to provide so this is why we haven't got enough homes now be it social housing or even first-time buyer homes because the demand is so great it's 3.6 million uh, school places or less than that obviously but it's, you get my meaning um, and 3.6 million people making demands on our NHS and our other services so you know, this is not about racism. This is about the demographics or the just the makeup of our population and the demand on our services, which are already showing to be overloaded. And um, the EU membership is onerous to us. It's causing us damage. It's not causing us any good anymore. And yes, our economy may be good, but we've voted to say that the economy is not the priority. Now, the, the parliamentarians, the Remainers, want to impose and change that vote and have their way. But the thing is, the people have voted differently. And I think it's, uh, I believe, too, that many of the people who remain, the ordinary citizen, I'm not talking about the parliamentarians, but the um, 
ordinary citizen, they voted to remain because they feared what would happen to the economy, as I did. I took six months to um, make a decision. And finally, after six months, after looking into it all, I realised that uh, ex-chancellors of the exchequer, two, exchequer, two of them were willing to vote out, plus very, uh, a variety of um, MPs that uh, also knew more than I about the economy. So it's really a matter of opinion. So I appeal to all those who may have remained, uh, voted to remain, to realise that this is what the figures really mean. This is the truth of the matter. And that um, I also, uh, M Melvin King, the ex-bank um, manager of uh, Britain, the Bank of England, said that we could come out of, on WTO rules. Uh, and also there was another business um, uh, group that was saying that it wouldn't be such a bad thing if we did that. And I believe it's a case that with the way the Brexit rules, uh, Brexit negotiations are going, that we need to say, even in October, that we're going to come out on WTO rules and we have to be bold on this and take a chance because if we stay in or have this long um, five-year uh, or three-year um, interim period, we're going to end up having an incredible amount of... Um, EU citizens that we're going to have to support, as well as our own citizens. We've got 1.2 million of our own citizens in throughout the 27 nations of the EU, you know, which is not much, uh, and they will probably come back when they're old uh, because they'll get a better care here and be more secure and want to be with their family. But the EU citizens won't, most of them, because they won't be getting the care that they get in their own country that they would get here. So we'll have our own citizens as well as the EU citizens that we have to care for. And um, we should also be aware that we're getting the Polish. There's over a million now Polish here, which is a, a, a third of the 3.6 million EU citizens we have. Now, um, after that, it's the Romanians and the um, Irish, which are about 400,000, and then other EU citizens below that. Now, why... Are we getting such a large uh, amount of Polish people here? Probably because um, obviously they're on the Eastern Europe. There, it's probably they feel safer here. Now I can understand Romanians and Polish and others wanted to come here because their land is not so prolific in um, in uh, um, work and this sort of thing. But we can't sustain this. And also the Polish recently almost voted out of a democratic principle with regard to the EU and the EU were going to exclude them. Uh, and it's also a case that it's the Polish that actually claim benefit even though their children are not in Poland. And it's also a case that Poland has a negative, um, pop, um, negative um, immigration in their country. They have no, no immigration in their country. And the Polish Prime Minister, um, uh, I think it's the Prime Minister or maybe the um, it's a, a female was saying that having they said that having seen what's happened to Britain and Germany and France that they would not welcome immigration or refugees because of what's happened with regard to terrorism and the way it's changed their demographics so the Polish want to come here and benefit from Britain but they don't want the same to happen to their own nation so I think, uh, you know, we have to be aware that people and Europe, you know, they all have their own agenda and they won't care what happens to Britain. Um, they, everybody is looking for survival, you know, even as we all look for survival. But if we don't care for Britain, if we don't vote for Britain, if we don't protect Britain, there won't be a Britain to protect anymore.